Well, it's not all bad news for the economy. The U.S. productivity or output per hour worked rose at a healthy 2.3 percent in the second quarter. It is, however, down from 3.5 percent in the first three months of the year. Joining us is David Banson. He is the chief investment officer of the Banson Group. Uh, David, your thoughts on the number that came out today? It is a good number. It is going the wrong direction. And then now here's the really bad news. It's a lagging indicator. Mm. Ultimately, that productivity growth, which has been very strong since President Trump was elected, uh, is declining because the business investment is beginning to decline. Mm. Our little sequence of events we talk to clients about that we want to see has been greater business confidence leading to more business investment, capital expenditures, leading to greater productivity. Out of that productivity is where you get profits, where you get wage growth, jobs, all the good things. Uh, My concern is that the trade war is having an impact on business investment that will hurt productivity into the future. What are some of the conversations that you're having with companies in terms of how they're digesting all the news, the noise that is coming out of the White House? You know, we had heard when you look at the economic numbers, you could certainly argue the trade war hasn't had the kind of devastating effect maybe some had called for before. But as you point out, these things take time to really build up. Well, there's two major themes that I've had conversations about with my business owner clients since President Trump was elected. And the first theme is one I've experienced myself as a business owner. Hard to fill jobs because there's just a lot of people who are employed. There's less applicants. So the talent pool, the, it's, it's thinner than it used to be. Now, that's a good thing. For the economy, it may be a bad thing for for business owners, you know, in the in the rush to find talent. But that's been a major theme. But then on the other side of it now, I've been really shocked at how almost universal the consensus is Mm. that the trade war is hurting their businesses. I thought it would be a lagging impact. We wouldn't see till later. Only a select group of industries, a lot of clients talking about how the trade war is, in fact, impacting their ability uh, to make investment, to make decisions. Decisions. It's, it's adding to uncertainty and even impacting margins. Right now, what we're seeing um, in, in a lot of these, hearing in a lot of these earnings calls is just kind of holding back on the investment, but it's not necessarily leading to no. cuts just yet. I wonder where you think that trigger is. Is it when ultimately, if it does, the full tariff list goes into effect? So right now we've got a bit of relief on September 1st, but is it in December? You know, what, what do you think... Um, how, how do you think this all plays out? I think that the answer to the question is that the question itself, unfortunately, is a little off in that. In the, and I know exactly what you're getting at. There isn't necessarily a line in the sand. Mm. I think it will just drip, drip. There will be a continued uh, deterioration of that business spending, that business investment. So I don't think there's a certain singular moment, but it has certainly already begun. There are already De, uh, decisions to invest, to produce, to create that have not taken place. Mm-hmm. And so that sort of trickles through the economy. You have two things, the, the problems in the economy you see and then the things you don't see because they never got done. That's where we were on such a roll and unfortunately that momentum is stalled. We saw that big sell-off uh, yesterday on, on the back of the inversion and the yield curve. The 10-year is is back up above this year very slightly uh, in terms of the moves there. I mean, uh, what, do you, what do you think this points to in terms of the sense of and, and the broader outlook, if it is in fact an indicator of what's to come. Well, this part I am a little surprised uh, that oh, so many economists are not figuring this out uh, in a more clear and emphatic way. Mm. The 10 year at 1.5% and the 30 year below 2%, they say one thing we are in a deflationary environment and that the market is concerned and market actors are concerned and global capital is concerned about the disinflationary forces worldwide. This has been true for a long time. It's making its way into our shores now. Europe and Japan have been somewhat successful in exporting their deflation. So what the Fed is going to do about it remains to be seen. And there are two things that can be done in our country to reverse the effect of deflation. One is a course for the Fed to see the cost of capital continue to decrease, try to play with that short end of the curve. It's already pretty low. But then the other is for a lot of pro-growth, pro-business investment. Nothing fights off deflationary forces more than capital expenditures driving 
uh, pro- productivity growth. So uh, there's a chicken or egg issue here, but I think that unfortunately the yields dropping do speak to a lot of pessimism mm. in global, uh, the global economic conditions. I don't think it's too late. I do believe that there's still a chance for us to fight off a recessionary uh, force here in the States, but we're getting to that point where uh, the, some of the data is going to have to change in the next three to six months or I think a recession will come. Okay, David, thanks for stopping by today. David Benson joining me here at the desk.